Hi, everybody, and welcome to a new live demo episode. This time it's about Object Storage Service, or short, OSS. My name is Oliver, and I'm working as a solution architect at Alibaba Cloud. So what is OSS? OSS is Alibaba's Cloud's Object Storage Service, and it provides really a simple means for storing large, unstructured amounts of data in the cloud. Many, many terabytes, if you like. We don't put a hard limit on the amount of data that you can store on OSS. So it's really similar um, to, for example, Amazon S3 or commercial end user offerings like uh, Dropbox, for example. So uh, it's really ideal for huge amounts of unstructured big data. So what are the core concepts of OSS? It's really simple because there's just two actually. There's buckets and objects. Think of a bucket as the surrounding container that holds your individual objects. And the bucket puts certain you know, characteristic or configurations uh, around them. Like for example, in which region the object will get stored, which storage class the, the default value is, uh, what kind of security management options um, are set, what lifecycle management options are activated, which settings are activated or set in the replication or monitoring space. On the other hand, uh, the objects also provide different APIs and operations for you, uh, for example, to create objects, to read them, to delete them, to copy them, and so on and so, and so forth. Looking a little bit closer at the storage classes, we're providing three at the moment, standard, infrequent access, and archive. And they differ in two main aspects. One is the pricing, and one, the other one is the use case, actually. So the pricing, standard tier is actually the, the cheapest pricing, or has the cheapest pricing. We charge around two US cent per gigabyte. Infrequent access and archive are way cheaper than standard. So why would you choose standard at all? Uh, this is because, uh, or this this is really depends on the use case and how your data is accessed. So standard is really suited for frequently accessed data. Infrequent access and archive is suited if your data is only infrequently accessed or rarely accessed. It also, or they also provide different limitations on your files, like for example, the minimum storage duration and the minimum object size that is built per file. On top of that, uh, while they have lower standard storage fees, you know, there's additional fees if you want to retrieve them, for example. And also in the case of archive, it takes around one minute to restore the data and to have it accessible again. So OSS, um, in addition, also comes with uh, a huge amount of different features, which I want to quickly touch here before we take uh, a look in the live demo. Like, for example, the possibility to really to, to define lifecycle management rules, which allow you to automate the transitioning between different access or, or, or storage tiers, for example, or to automatically delete certain files after a certain amount of time. Also, we provide different tooling to make uploading objects much more easier. Um, in case a file is bigger than five gigabytes, you need to chunk them into different parts and upload them. So we provide tools that makes it easier to chunk these file to 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 divide these files into different chunks and upload them in parallel. Note that the maximum object size here is 48.8 terabytes for one single file. What's also really convenient with OSS is the possibility to already read files while they are being uploaded. So you can read files and at the same time append new data, which makes it really con uh, suited for video streaming use cases, for example. Also note that OSS guarantees strong consistency for every operation. Looking at some other features, um, OSS also provides integrated image processing, which makes it really simple to convert images to different formats, uh, resizes them, or apply different effects by 
only specifying an additional query parameter here. We will also take a look at that later on. Also provides mirroring features and redirects, which lets you easily you know, redirect or mirror certain files, which are uh, at different uh, data sources. On top of that, um, OSS has a broad support for different SDKs for different programming languages and platforms like Java, Android, iOS, Python, Node, and Go. Um, it comes with um, different tools like OS Browser, which lets you run a UI on your local machine to manage your buckets, and also with a huge amount of different CLI tools. I just posted one of them here. It's called OSS Util, which makes it really simple to upload big files that are bigger than five gigabytes and help you in splitting them up into different chunks and upload them in, upload them in parallel and also make sure that it also works if the connection is interrupted. It will automatically resume when the connection was interrupted. Also for data migration, we have a tool called OSS Import, which you can deploy on your own machines or on any virtual machine or cloud, which lets you um, easily migrate data to OSS from different data sources like Amazon S3 or Azure Blob Storage, for example. All right, enough talk. Let's head over to the console. So right now we're here at the Alibaba Cloud Console landing page, and I will just go to the object storage. And what you can see here is the landing page uh, where you can see your know, first statistics about all your buckets, like you know the entire storage that's being used, the amount of traffic in this month, the amount of requests, and so on and so forth. So let's create a bucket by clicking here on this plus symbol, and let's give it a name. Let's call it Arafato-Demo. You also need to specify the region. Be aware that you cannot change it afterwards. Same with the storage class. You're defining the standard storage class here. Individual files can have different storage classes later on, but this is really the default storage class here. Let's go with the standard. And also, you need to specify the access control list. So who is allowed, or you know, um, uh, it, it basically defines if it's set to private that every request must be signed, no matter if it's write or read. But you can also say this entire bucket should be public read which means you don't need to sign the request. Anybody's allowed to read the files. Uh, be aware that this is also, again, the standard setting for the bucket. You can specify the ACLs on each file also. OK, let's hit OK. And after a couple of seconds, my bucket is created. So as you can see, for every bucket, you again have this uh, summary here. Um, What's interesting here, under domain names, you will find the endpoints that you can use uh, for your applications, like if you want to access them from the internet or if you want to access them from a VPC. Keep in mind that uh, this address here, the internal one, only works with uh, ECS instances that are deployed in the same region as your bucket here. So only resources from Frankfurt can access this VPC endpoint here. All right, let's do something very simple first. Let's just upload an image. And let's go with a cat image here. So I just drag and drop. And uh, after a couple of seconds, this image is here. So let's take a look um, what we can do here. So as you can see, I can uh, quickly have a look at the URL and can just um, read that file from this URL. Now, let's go to one of the features that really differentiates OSS from other offerings. The ability that image processing is really integrated here. So let's give you an example. Let's create a rule for a new style that we want to apply to this image. And first of all, I need to give it a name like demo style. And I want to do two things here. First, I want to my, um, convert it to a PNG. And I also want to add a watermark to the picture. And let's call it demo. So this is how my picture will look like later on. And I hit OK. 
So now, as this style is created, let's go back to files and click on cat again. And I can now define the demo style here. Demo style, okay? Now, each time I add this style to an image, this style is applied. So if I copy this file URL now, paste it here, as you can see, this watermark has now automatically been added to the picture. And if I, if I want to save it, we can also see that it's now a PNG. So this makes it really simple to um, add different image processing features, which are built right in and are for free. Another feature uh, that I want to show you is the possibility to turn a bucket into a web server, actually. So here's another bucket which I have configured to support static pages. As you can see, I need to define a default home page. It's called index HTML and a default error page, error HTML, which is delivered to the client in case the path is not found. So going back to overview, what you can see now is uh, if, I, if I now take this URL here and paste it into here, I have a nice static website. And this is ideal, a very cost efficient solution for landing pages or single page applications. Because as we said, one gigabyte of storage costs you two US cent plus the outgoing traffic to the internet. This is all what you need to pay, but there's no need to run any uh, web service just to deliver uh, static content. Also, as you can see, if I enter an invalid uh, URL, you know, the error page that I have specified is automatically delivered to the client. So really convenient and cost efficient. Let's go back to our demo bucket and let's take a last look on some features like anti-leach, which allows you to define a whitelist um, of HTTP referrer referrers that are allowed to access your content. So this is you know, like, like a low cost protection uh, for your content so that in case uh, links to your buckets or objects are distributed in, in forums, uh, people can just download uh, these, these files. Um, in order to do that, the HTTP referrer attribute must be set correctly. Also, you can activate logging, uh, cross-origin resource sharing, which is really important for uh, web-based applications that would like to access um, OSS. As we mentioned earlier, you can define lifecycle management rules here. You can define cross-region replication. It's currently not supported in Frankfurt. It's only supported in the Chinese regions and the US regions, but we will provide support for that here as well soon, very soon. Let's have a last um, view on back to origin feature. As we said earlier, it lets me create uh, mirroring rules very easily. So let's create a rule. And what I want to do, I want to mirror the entire, uh, let's say, Linux kernel archive. Okay, and in case it's not found on my bucket, I want to have it sent or stored on my bucket and then delivered to, to the requester from there. So over time, this will eventually, you know, I will have more and more data from uh, the origin on my own bucket. So we need to provide at first the origin URL, which is in this case, this one here. Let's copy that over to here. And I also need, oops, there was, and I also need the other part, this. Let's paste it in here. Okay, then I can also say that uh, the query strings should be transferred as well. No, it's just uh, simple get operations to a file, so I don't need to transfer the query strings. I can also set specific transmission rules for the HTTP headers, like I want to allow all of them, or I only want to transmit certain HTTP headers of the original request. I can explicitly deny some, or also rewrite some of them, okay? In this case, I just transmit all HTTP headers. Let's click on OK. And now there's a mirroring rule here, as you can see. Now, if I want to get this file here, for example, 
what I can do is the following. Let's go back to my overview. Grab the bucket domain name here. Oops. And append it here. And request it. So as you can now see, this is now the change log for the O.2 of the Linux kernel. As you can see, it's actually part of my bucket. If I now go to files, we will see that this file has also been transferred to my bucket. So this really makes it really easy to do zero downtime migrations of any kind of static data, for example. Okay? You can just mirror it and eventually all the data will be, will be stored on your bucket. All right, so this concludes uh, this quick live demo of Object Storage Service. I hope uh, you found it interesting. If you have any questions, feel free uh, to reach out to me at o.arafat at alibaba-inc.com. Happy to answer your questions and uh, have a great day. Bye.